Hello, my name is John Pally, and welcome to part two of three in this podcast series on white structures in dermoscopy. In part one of this podcast series, we discussed white structures such as the central white patch, milia-like cysts, keratin scales, the coronoid lamella, and the white dots of sweat ducts and acral skin. Now let's continue with our list. Thavayos Adal published this article in 2010 describing the seven most common dermoscopic patterns seen in pyogenic granulomas. As you can see in the summary in the picture to the right, these seven patterns are composed of different combinations of four typical local structures. Red homogeneous areas, a white collarette around the lesion, white rail lines separating the red homogeneous areas, and or vascular structures. Here we have two histopathologically verified pyogenic granulomas. In both cases, we can see large pinkish-red capillary tufts or lobules, which are the so-called red homogeneous areas. Of course, the color is far from homogeneous in the case on the left, which may seem confusing when using this term. These lobules are separated by rather thick white bands, which may correspond to fiber septa around the capillary lobules. These bands are referred to as white rail lines. In the case on the left, we can also see a ring-shaped collar composed of yellowish-white keratin, as if the epithelium had been pushed away at the periphery as the lesion started growing exophytically. This finding is what Thabayos Adal called the white collarette, and it was present in three out of four pyogenic granulomas in their study. However, it can also be seen around clear cell acanthomas, amelanotic melanomas, Kaposi's sarcomas, and other tumors. In general, it is advisable to always have pyogenic granulomas removed and sent for histopathological examination, since malignant diagnoses, including amelanotic melanoma, can look very similar. Here we see, uh, however, a benign differential diagnosis to the right. Of course, this is an angioma, with a typical small pink or red lacunes, which morphologically could also be classified as clods, globules, or cobblestones, but with a red color. As you can see, these lacunes are also separated by white lines, and in between the clusters of lacunes, we also find a white structure that is very similar to the white rail lines of pyogenic granulomas. These white structures, however, don't have a name yet, but could be described as a fibrous white background surrounding the capillary lobules of some angiomas. White halo is a term that has been used to describe whitish or pale structures surrounding vascular structures often observed in keratinizing tumors. One of the most common uses of the term is to describe the whitish halo seen around hairpin vessels in squamous cell carcinoma as shown in the case to the left from Argenciano et al's publication from 2004, or to the right you can also see this pale or whitish halo surrounding the hairpin vessels of this irritated seborrheic keratosis. As seen around hairpin vessels, we can also find whitish or pale halos around other vessels. This is quite common in melanocytic and non-melanocytic lesions with a papillomatous surface. Here we have a dermal nevus to the left with so-called centered vessels within pale, well-circumscribed clods or exophytic papillomatous structures. This gives the sensation of a light-colored halo surrounding the vessel. These are especially visible at 6 o'clock within the white circle. To the right, we have similar clods or papillomatous structures with centered vessels surrounded by whitish halos, but at the periphery, we also find an atypical network. In this case, the diagnosis is, of course, a malignant melanoma. Here are two more examples of non-melanocytic lesions with white halos around centered vessels. To the left, we have a seborrheic keratosis located on the scalp, and to the right, we see similar structures in these papillomatous lesions located on the penile shaft of a young patient. These correspond to condylomas. To emphasize the fact that white halos around vascular structures are not specific for any single diagnosis, here you can see that even Bowen's disease can present with white halos around the typical clustered glomerular vessels. In this case, we should look for another clue to the diagnosis, which is the typical yellow and white keratin scales, as discussed in the previous podcast. The next structure I would like to discuss is hypopigmentation, which can be defined as any skin area in which the pigment is lighter than the normal pigmentation of the patient's surrounding skin. One clear example is the white hypopigmentation seen around a halo nevus such as this one. Hypopigmentation can also be seen in the central dermal components of some compound nevi such as this one. At times, it can be very difficult to determine whether or not this hypopigmentation is actually lighter than the patient's normal skin. 
it can at times also be hard to distinguish hyperpigmentation from regression. Regression is a well-known phenomenon and can be visualized with dermoscopy in many malignant melanomas. The result of the fibroplasia in the papillary dermis is a scar-like depigmentation, which often has an irregular shape and is located asymmetrically within or in the peripheral parts of the lesion. As you can see in these two examples, the white color of the regression areas are usually blended in with some pink tones. In the case of the right, you can also see some small gray dots corresponding to melanophages in the papillary dermis, a dermoscopic finding known as peppering. As mentioned previously in this podcast series, dermoscopic language can sometimes be confusing. One of the first local structures we learn to see in dermoscopy is the so-called blue-white veil. This is probably due to both its striking appearance and the fact that its presence is so suggestive of an invasive melanoma. However, most authors prefer to talk about blue-white structures, including both regression and the blue-white veil. In regression, there is a predominance of white color over the gray or grayish-blue dots of the peppering and it is usually found within a flat part of the lesion. In the blue-white veil, as seen in these two examples, we predominantly observe a blue structuralist area covered with a whitish haze, which is due to the thickening and hyperkeratinization of the overlying epidermis. The blue-white veil is usually present in a raised and palpable, palpable part of the lesion. One must be careful to avoid overuse of the term blue-white veil. If the blue-white structures are seen in 100% of the lesion, we are actually looking at a homogeneous blue global pattern, which is the classic finding in a blue nevus. I find that a lot of my colleagues have a hard time in cases such as the one to the left, in which one may perceive a grayish-blue shadow in the central dermal component of a compound or atypical nevus. This is not enough to classify the lesion as having a blue-white veil. Thank you very much for watching. For even more examples of white structures in dermoscopy, please watch part three of this podcast series.